Hello, Dumpsterinos and Frugalistas, and welcome to the video. It's finally time. The time has come. The time you've all been waiting for. Their mystery can meal. Yes, I have about a dozen mystery cans that we've pulled out of the dumpsters. A mystery can being a can, often dented, that doesn't have its label. And I've been collecting them for a while, and I've been wanting to do a mystery can meal for a while, and today is the day. My anticipation is that I'm just going to be opening a whole bunch of cans of vegetables and make a big pot of soup. That's kind of the easiest. But I don't know, because I don't know what's in these cans. So, let's get to opening and see what we can figure out to make. So here I go, opening cans. The first one is evaporated milk. The best by date in 2026. It's, it's, it's diced tomatoes. And number three, applesauce. Those both say shake well, so I'm pretty sure they're evaporated milk. Also, 2024 best by date on that one. It's canned pears. Did not expect that either. And more diced tomatoes. Oh, it's canned salmon. I think that might be a treat for the kitty cats. And we've got Da -da -da -da. Refried beans, which is sort of unfortunate because I already have an open can of those in the fridge. Might be saving these for later. Cream of mushroom soup. Chicken. And final can. Potatoes. All right, well, that was not what I expected at all out of those cans, Dumpsterinos. I was expecting like a can of green beans and a can of peas and a can of carrots and a can of corn. I don't know why, why I thought there would just be one can of each kind of vegetable and I could just make vegetable soup, but that is not what I opened. I wasn't anticipating fruit, the pears and the applesauce. I was not anticipating evaporated milk. And I know those two other cans are evaporated milk. So I don't want to use those now because I'm not even sure what to do with this evaporated milk. And well, I wasn't expecting the refried beans, uh, tomatoes didn't surprise me. Anyway, here we go. It took me a while to figure out what the heck to do with this. What is my plan? But here it is. So what I plan to do is take the canned potatoes, mash the potatoes up and mix in some egg to make little dumplings. I saw something like this on Instagram recently. And I didn't really pay attention to how they did it, but I know there were smushed up potatoes and I know there was egg. So I'm going to try that. And then I'm going to combine the little dumplings with the cream of mushroom soup and the canned chicken to kind of make like a little chicken stew kind of thing with the potato dumplings. Cool. And then I'm not sure the tomatoes. I do have some zucchini in the fridge and I do have a lot of onions. So I was thinking about sauteing up some onions and zucchini and mixing it with the diced tomatoes to make a sort of a ratatouille thing. But I have the feeling my kids won't really want to eat that and I would be the only one to eat that. And I might just save the canned tomatoes to, um, to go with some hamburger meat I have in the freezer to can up some, you know, hamburger meat for pasta sauce someday. Or for chili so I might save the tomatoes for that but if I thought my kids would eat the ratatouille then I'd be making ratatouille and then for dessert I thought well obviously okay the fruit like a little dish of applesauce or a dish of pears but then I thought of something else to do with the fruit which is also totally experimental because I haven't done any of this before and hopefully it'll turn out so I'm just mashing up the canned potato I'm gonna add in this egg and then season with salt, white pepper, and lots of garlic. 
Mix that all together. Seems a little mushy though. I add in flour so it will bind together and make a nice dough. And then I just gonna drop little spoonfuls of the dough in the pan where I was sauteing onions. Let them fry up a little bit and cook on the inside before they become stew dumplings. While they cook, we can make a dessert. There is the refrigerator pie crust I've been saving for just such an occasion. So I'm just pushing it into my little heart-shaped muffin pan. And I'm going to pre-bake my little pie shells here at 425 for a few minutes. And then I can get back to the stove. All right, here we are with our little cooked potato dumplings, which are akin to small potato pancakes. Um, the kids came through and they tried a few and they liked them and in fact took more out of the pan than I would have expected. So that's a good sign. All right, I'm going to add in the cream of mushroom soup. The cream of mushroom is of course a condensed soup. And normally when you make it as soup, you put an equal amount of milk in as the can, you know, you fill the can with milk. But anyway, I've got our evaporated milk here, which is even thicker. So I thought I'll just put a little of that in, or as much as I think we need, but I'll use that instead of just milk to thin out the sauce. And then I'll also put in our can of chicken. And that's gonna become our chicken stew. I want to break up these pieces of chicken much smaller. Now, of course, everything that was in a can is cooked already. Everything that wasn't in a can wasn't cooked already. All right, I think we'll add some more of the evaporated milk. Just so we get a little saucier here. That looks kind of interesting. I'm not really a chicken stew, chicken pot pie, chicken and dumplings kind of person, but I think Frugal Daddy is. And I think the kids might really like this because they like potatoes. I mean, chicken, starch, fatty sauce, what's not to love? All right, so basically that just has to all heat all the way through and it would be ready to eat, but I'll, I'll keep it going on low for a little while. We'll see what kind of seasoning we need to add, if any. The soup probably has a lot of sodium in it, so it doesn't really need too much salt. And I put salt and pepper and garlic in the little potato thingies. So, and we have the sauteed onions here, so we'll see. But I don't know what you think, but that actually looks pretty good to me. Better than I expected, to be honest. I'm glad I pre-cooked the little dumplings. The Instagram video I saw where somebody was adding these little potato dumplings into their soup. They just kind of dropped the, the raw dumpling dough into the boiling soup to cook that way, which I think is standard for a dumpling. I'm not, like I said, I'm not really a dumpling person, but I thought cooking them first might be better because then I know they're cooked all the way through. This would probably be good with some broccoli thrown in if I had some. And now back to our dessert sitch. I pre-baked my little pie crusts for a few minutes just because I'm always nervous that my pie crust won't cook all the way through. I do it with my pizza crust too. So I am going to fill these with our canned pears and maybe some of the applesauce too, if I need it to kind of fill in the gaps and maybe I'll just sprinkle a little cinnamon on top and hopefully they'll be nice little cute Valentine pear tarts. I'm going to save the pear juice for something else, maybe just adding to fruit salad so it's moist. So I got my pears into my little tarts, and I'm going to put just a little bit of applesauce on each one to kind of, I don't know, fill in the gaps. I don't think the applesauce is going to really hold the whole thing together like I'm kind of wanting it to. There's really nothing to hold it all together, but that's okay. 
I have a feeling that this will be really good with whipped cream or vanilla ice cream on top, as pies tend to be, but uh, I don't have those things, so they're not going to get those right now. Too bad you can't turn evaporated milk into whipped cream. So I'll top with a little cinnamon, and my oven's at 425. And I'll put them in for a few more, oops, a few more minutes. Hopefully the kids will like this. Ooh, it's still hot from when I pre-baked. Okay. All right, so back in the oven until they seem done. And I don't know how long that would be, but we'll find out, won't we? I think it's time to remove our pear tarts. And there we go with the pear tarts. Pear applesauce cinnamon tarts, fresh from the oven. They look really good. They smell really good. But will they taste good? We'll find out soon enough. All right, here we go. Neve wants to be, she actually wants to be, I didn't have to bribe her or force her, the taste tester. Everybody will be a taste tester since this is what we're having for dinner, but you're the official taste tester for the official video. It's chicken stew with potato dumplings. And I think any green veg would be good in there. I think broccoli would be good in there. I should have put the zucchini that I said I had in there. These would be good. I think cream of mushroom soup is the key to surviving the apocalypse. Like that is the thing. If you're a prepper, stock up on cream of mushroom soup because it just brings everything together. Not bad. Not bad. That's yeah. high praise from the queen. Pretty good. Okay. Potatoes are good. All right, now you are gonna get to sit and eat your whole dinner and try not to get your hair in it, but I want you to try the dessert too. Oh. Okay. Here is our pear applesauce cinnamon tart. Ooh, very Valentine's. It is very Valentine's-y. That's what I was thinking, because I love you so much. That's good. Is it? Mm-hmm. What's it taste like? Oh, Perry cinnamon goodness. Perry cinnamon goodness. Yet again, a thumbs up. Frugal Daddy, don't set your arm on fire because you're leaning into the burner. Do you want to try okay. it? Yeah, of course I do. Okay. It looks get great. A bowl for you. It's a it's sort of it's sort of a beige sludge. But I think uh, any vegetable would be great in there with it, I think. Or pickles. It's really good, isn't it? It's like surprising. Because it looks This is really good. <laughs> like, I don't know. This would be good with a nice side salad. And then we really have good. the dessert. Did you, do you also want to try a little oh. tart? I, I haven't done the other one. Should I or just bite it? You can do it however you want. I haven't taken the others out of their pan yet. Very Valentine's-y. Happy Valentine's Day, dear. This is warm, but it tastes like apple pie. Is it? Well, it's <laughs> it's pear pie with applesauce and cinnamon. Oh. So I guess it kind of just would yeah. taste like apple. I mean, it tastes like apple pears pie. Pears are, yeah. You microwave this. Well, why don't it's you? It's just like apple pie. Wouldn't it be good with a little dollop of whipped cream or ice cream? You don't put your fork in. All right, there you go. Mystery can meal accomplished. It's a success. I'm sure Autumn will like it too. Because really, she's the easiest to please. Yeah. So if you and Neve like that, I'm sure I'll come on. And cool. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for hanging out with me while I cooked. And we will have to do this again soon. Since we have more mystery cans. Or anytime. If you guys just want to hang out while I cook dinner once in a while, well, we can do that too. Those chunks are pears. The chunks are pears and the goo is applesauce. Because of the applesauce, it tastes like I'm eating an apple. Well, I think also because of the cinnamon. The cinnamon makes yeah. you think. Because pear is a, it's not dissimilar from apple. It's just, it's just a little softer and a little gentler. Mm. Mm -hmm. The pie crust was from the dumpster. Oh my God. That was good too. Fun, yay. Did you say we have ice cream? No, I said we should. Oh. <laughs>